Hello, welcome to the lecture number 18 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. In the last class, we looked at the transition probability to a state f from state t and this was given by E naught pi square pi 4 h bar square omega f i pi omega square sin square del omega by 2 into t divided by delta omega by 2 whole square modulus of f epsilon dot mu i whole square and we know this is the transition moment integral ok and this for a continuum of of states around f ok we showed that this p f of t was equal to pi e naught square by 2 h bar omega f i by omega square modulus of f slum dot mu i square rho e f i into t and from here we defined a rate rate of absorption is equal to p f of t divided by t. So, that was nothing but pi epsilon naught pi 2 h bar omega f i pi omega square modulus of f epsilon dot mu by i whole square rho e f so rho f Okay, small mistakes. So we call it as rho f of e and rho f of e. Okay, this we finally wrote as this is nothing but w f. Okay, so this was equal to from state i. So, rate from state i to state f that is buried in a continuum is equal to 2 pi h bar mod mu square rho f of e okay? and where mod mu square was given by e naught square by 4 h bar square modulus of f epsilon dot mu i square and this we call it as transition dipole. Okay, or square of the transition triple because mu is the transition dipole. So now we know two things that the rate of absorption from a state i to f is given by mu square and some constants okay, that publish multiplied by density of states at f. 
Okay. Now, these constants turn out to be um, 2 pi h bar and that mu square I just wrote is equal to E naught square by 4 h bar square and your transient moment integral square. Okay. So, this is called transition okay, modulus of this is transition dipole and this transition dipole is proportional to transition moment integral. Okay. Now, there is one thing that you must remember that is that this transition moment integral you know, uh, dictates what the selection rules are going to be. Of course, in this course up till now we have not come across the selection rules, but I will come to the selection rules towards the end of this course. Okay? Last few lectures will be uh, based on the selection rules of rotation, vibration and electronic transitions. Now, this is something that is rate of absorption. Okay, in chemical picture, we had two things. Okay, remember when you had this delta functions, we had two of the delta functions, delta omega f i plus omega plus delta omega f i minus omega modulus square, maybe couple of lectures below, you can go and look at it. And this I told you corresponds to stimulated emission. and this will correspond to absorption. Okay. So, the stimulated emission and absorption are a similar process. So, in the presence of the classical light, okay, a molecule or an atom or a quantum mechanical particle can absorb energy and go from a ground state to the excited state or can come back from the excited state to the ground state. So, if you have a state I and state F, okay, you can either go up that is your absorption and or come down that is your stimulated emission and this is in the presence of however when you excite a molecule okay it does not stay there forever it has to come back even if you switch off the light and that is called spontaneous emission so emission can happen by two different pathways one is the stimulated emission and the other is a spontaneous emission Unfortunately, in semi classical picture, spontaneous emission cannot be dealt with directly. So, it has to be introduced in an ad hoc manner, and that ad hoc manner was uh, developed by Einstein. It is called Einstein's coefficient. So, we will look into that now. Okay. Now, for example, <clears throat> if you have a light impinging on a particle. Okay. So, of course, it is never going to be a single photon. Generally, when you do uh, uh, spectroscopic measurements, you will have bunch of photons, so some intensity of light. Okay. And you have to that intensity of light, you have some radiation density. So, I will define a quantity called radiation density. Okay. That is nu radiation density rho or rho uh, radiation density at some frequency nu, this is given by du by dv, d nu, du by d nu, where okay, u is the energy per unit volume. by unit frequency. Okay. Now, why won't I want to do this? So, the reason why I want to do it is that I want to in introduce a concept of spontaneous 
emission. Okay, because I told you that in presence of light, okay, in a semi-classical picture, there is no spontaneous emission. There is only stimulated emission. But we all know that the spontaneous emission does happen. So we have to introduce the concept of spontaneous emission. So there are totally three processes that happen when the light is absorbed by when light is impinged on a uh, particle. So one is the absorption. Second one is the spon uh, stimu stimulated emission. And third one is spontaneous emission. Okay. And both of these can be related to the transition. all transition dipole. But I still do not know how to look at this okay? and that is uh, um, that is what we are looking at. Now let us consider two levels. So let us start with the simplest of the problem there are two levels. Okay? Let us call it as in initial level I with energy E i and final level F with energy EF. Okay? And let Ni be the population of the lower level and Nf be the population of the, so Ni, so Ni comma Nf are the populations, populations of the initial and final levels. Okay? And we have radiation density rho radiation at a new frequency is du by d nu. Okay? Now, if you have that, then what can happen? There are three processes that can happen. So, the particle can go from top to bottom that is the absorption and it can come down from top to bottom by stimulated emission and it can come down from top to bottom by spontaneous emission. Okay? Now let us look at the rate of transitions. Now if I want to go from Ni to from top to bottom, so that means rate of absorption. Okay? So the rate of absorption W going from the initial state to final state. Okay? Okay. Uh, for the sake of convenience and the way it is written in the textbooks, I will we'll also call I as 1 and F as 2. Okay? So initial state is 1 and final state is 2. So we can also write 1 and 2 and corresponding energies are E2 and E1. Okay? Now if you have omega Fi, this is nothing about uh, sorry rho, uh, W Fi. If this is nothing but w, w12 that is the rate constant from going from level 1 to level 2 okay that is given by this rate will of course depend on number of particles that are or now what is the population in the ground state okay and the population in the ground state is n1 and the excited state is n2 so this is proportional to number of molecules or the population in the ground state. So this is proportional to N1. Okay? And it is also proportional to okay. let me write this way. So W12 is proportional to 
n1. Now w12 is also proportional to amount of radiation. If the more radiation is there, if you have more intensity, more number of more intensity of light, more number of transients. So it is proportional to radiation density. So that means it is proportional to at the appropriate frequency nu. Okay. So, it is proportional to two quantities n1 that is the population of the ground state and the radiation density nu. So, instead of this, so I, I need to remove the proportionality constant. So, I, what I will get is w12 equals to proportional constant I will call it as b12 n1 rho rad. So, this is rate of absorption. So that is when process are when the when the process of going from the state one to state two. Now, under same condition, if I want to come back from state two to state one, so rate of absorption for coming down W21, or rate of coming down W21, that is means that is means you have state two and state one, and you have to come down. So, this coming down is by two processes. One is the spontaneous emission, other is the stimulated emission. Okay. In the case of stimulated emission, it will be proportional to the population N2 and it will be proportional to radiation density. Okay. And the proportionality constant I will call it as B21. While the spontaneous process will only depend on the uh, population, it does not depend on the radiation density because spontaneous emission does not need radiation. If you excite the molecule and switch off the light, it will come down by itself okay? and that is the spontaneous emission. So, you will have N2, but you do not need radiation density, but it should be proportional constant and that proportional constant I will call as A21. Okay? So, that is the A21 that is nothing but your, so this will, this rate will be for the stimulated emission and this rate for B will be spot. Right, okay. Now, you have two rate now you have two rates one is w12 that go takes molecules from top to bottom uh, sorry bottom to top and then you have w21 which brings molecule okay now if let us assume there is a thermal equilibrium between states 1 and 2. So, this is my 1 this. Now, if you take thermal equilibrium then you will have to follow Boltzmann law. And what this Boltzmann population distribution law says that N1 by N2 equals to exponential delta E by kt. Okay. By the way, it is slightly written, usually written as other way around n2 by n1 is equal to exponential minus delta E by kt. So, I am just writing the inverse of this. Okay. Now, this delta E is equal to E2 minus E1. Okay. So, if you, there is an equilibrium, okay, then what you have is N1 by N2 is equal to exponential delta E by Okay, by the way, this kt is 
is nothing but your Boltzmann constant. Okay, equilibrium also means rate of transitions going from bottom to top is equal to rate of transitions going from top to bottom. So, that is nothing but W12 must be equal to W21. Equilibrium, when you have, let us suppose you have an equilibrium between A and B. So, that means, so there is a K forward and K backward multiplied by rate constant. So, rate of forward reaction must be equal to rate of backward reaction. So, simply means Kf into A should be equal to Kb into so that is what I am doing. So, in under equilibrium rate of absorption should be equal to rate of spontaneous and stimulated emission put together. So, when I put do this, this will be equal to B 1 to N 1 rho rad nu must be equal to B 2 1 N 2 rho rad nu plus A 2 1 n 2. So, this is the equilibrium. So, you have now have two uh, equ equations for the equilibrium. Okay. So, that is the equilibrium according to Boltzmann law and this is the equilibrium because of the radiation that is present and that is making things go up and down. Okay. Now, according to black body radiation, law okay this is given by planck okay rho radiation nu is given by 8 pi h nu cube pi c cube into 1 over e to the power of h nu by kt minus 1 okay so this derivation we have to look it up look up in black body radiation theory by Planck. Okay, by the way, there was something called you know ultraviolet catastrophe. You know this equation was proposed by Planck where the energy is given in terms of H nu Okay, for avoiding the black uh, ultraviolet catastrophe in the black body radiation. Okay. Now, let us look at this little bit more carefully. Okay. Rho radiation at nu, a black body radiation is given by 8 pi h nu cube by c cube nu is the frequency h nu cube 1 over e to the power of h nu by k t minus 1. Okay. Now, we know that n 1 by n 2 is equal to e to the power of delta e by kt okay so this is nothing but e to the power of delta e is nothing but h nu okay h nu by kt okay so these are the two equations that we have and that we need to now let us go back to our equation n1 p12 n1 rho rad of nu is equal to b21 n2 nu rad rho rad nu plus a21 n2 so i'm going to slightly rearrange okay i'm going to bring this equation to this side so that will be nothing but then i can take rho rad into nu as common is equal to I am sorry into B 1 to N 1 minus B 
2 1 n 2 equals to a 2 1 n 2 ok so your rho rad nu is given by a 2 1 n 2 divided by b 1 2 n 1 minus b 2 1 n 2 ok now what I am going to do is the following is that now I am going to slightly rearrange this equation in a such a way that I will be able to use this this one ok. Now what I will do is I will divide by n2 all through the denominator and the numerator. So this will be nothing but rho rad this implies rho rad of nu ok let me do it in the next page. rho rad of nu is equal to a 2 1 by n 2 divided by b 1 2 n 1 minus b 2 1 n 2. Now I want to divide by n 2 both numerator and denominator ok. So, when I do that this is equal to a 2 1 divided by b 1 2 n 1 by n 2 minus b 2 1 ok. Now, that is the equation that we get of nu and my n 1 by n 2 is equal to exponential uh, h nu by k t right ok. Now, and I also know further that rho rad of nu is equal to 8 by h <coughs> nu cube by c cube 1 over to the power of h nu by k t minus 1 ok. Now, I am going to slightly rewrite this equation rho rad of nu is equal to a 2 1. Now, what I will do is I will take b 1 2 as common. If I take b 1 2 as common sorry b 2 1 as common then I will get b 1 2 by b 2 2 1 n 1 n 2 minus 1 ok. Now, you can see n 1 by n 2 is this exponential h nu by k t. So, this will give me a 2 1 divided by b 2 1. Now, n 1 by n 2 is divided by b 1 2 by b 2 1 2 e to the power of h nu by k t minus 1 ok. Now, you can see quickly that there is some symbolance between this and this ok. So, we can see that these two equations are looking similar, but they are not really similar yet. So, we need to do little bit of more of mathematical manipulation to be able to look at it which I will continue in the next lecture. Okay, we'll stop it here and thank you very much.